Hey, Natural Science guys. Hey, I posted the videos on the stream, or the videos, the pictures of the answer key. The one thing I want to point out to you is sometime when we're on these power problems where it talks about a thousand watts and kilowatts. Remember, the power company bills you in kilowatt hours. So it's kilowatts used per hour. So if we get a thing like a thousand watts times eight hours, that'd be 8,000 watts that's using a day, but the power company's not gonna bill you for 8,000 watts, they'll bill you for eight kilowatts. Remember, you move the decimal point back three places. So you multiply that by the range of power. And this is kind of an older worksheet because it's seven cents. Now it's about 12 cents. So 56 cents to run your refrigerator a day, which nowadays would be about a buck. All right, uh, we'll go over the uh, bookwork. You can check that out. If you have any questions, see me on Google uh, Meet tonight around 9 o'clock or so, between 8.30 and 9.30. I'll send a li link out when I'm ready. Also, uh, with that power thing, with that cost, my grandpa, when he was alive, used to have a radio on 24-7, 365. But now he said it was his guard dog. So at maybe a quarter a day it cost to run, you can see why it was a very inexpensive dog food, dog, guard dog, because you couldn't buy dog food for that price. All right, the first section review section is on page 545. We had to do sections one through numbers one through five. So we'll go over the answers here. Uh, motion of a flashlight from one terminal to another terminal. Electrons go from negative to positive, or electrons from the negative terminal through the filament and the light bulb, and they give off lights. And then they travel towards the positive end of the terminal. So electrons start at negative, Go through the filament, the light bulb, heat the filament causing light, and electrons now go to the negative positive end of the terminal. Now, if you have a light bulb with a diode, it's a little bit different, but they do flow the same, same way. Which could possibly produce a current? A and B. Wire across battery terminals, yes, metals conduct. Two electrodes in a solution of positive and negative. That'd be like, say, salt water. Salt crystal, no. Chunks of salt do not conduct electricity where salt water does. So sugar water mixture, not really. Sugar is a non-conductor solution there. Uh, number three, the answer is B, from high to low. One high to one low, they're going to go from high to low. Number four. Resistance is the opposition posed by a material or a device to the flow of charge. To calculate it, you need to know the voltage and the current, the volts and the amps. And number five, insulators or conductors. Wood, insulator, paper clip. If it's a metal, it's a, it's a conductor. If it's a plastic one, it's an insulator. Glass, insulator. Air, insulator. Paper, insulator, plastic, insulator, steel nail, conductor, and rubber is an insulator. That's why the workers use rubber gloves. Air, we don't always think of as an insulator, but think about this way. If you get those uh, puffy jackets, the puffer jackets, they keep you nice and warm. They have air pockets inside of them. All right, that's it for that section. Actually, I skipped a section. Let's go back to 536 now, and we'll do numbers one through five there. Identify the electrical charge of the following. Protons are positive, neutrons are neutral, and electrons are negative. Describe the interaction between two charges. Is the interaction the same between unlikes? Likes will repel, unlikes attract. Diagram what will happen if a positively charged rod is brought near the following objects. The drawing should show negative charges on the metal washer nearest to the rod and positive on the side of the furthest from the rod. That'd be kind of like this right there. Positive one side, negative on the other. And number five, explain, oh, sorry, four. Which of the following are conductors or insulators? Copper wire, and that's a pretty good conductor. That's why we wire our houses with copper. Your body when your skin is wet. Conductor, plastic comb, insulator. So that's why if you got wet skin or your feet are wet out of a pool, very dangerous for conducting electricity. Electricity. 
Explain how the forces between two positive charges change if the distance is tripled and if the amount of charge is doubled. So for letter A, if the distance is tripled, get that in the picture for you, the force will become one-ninth as large, and B, the force will double. Already got one section left on page 552. Here we go. Identify the types of elements in the schematic diagram of each type. All right, so we got a switch. We got a battery. We got bulbs. Uh, there's three light bulbs actually there. And then we have resistors right here. Two resistors. One battery, one switch, two resistors, three light bulbs. Describe the advantage of using a parallel arrangement for decorative lights rather than serial series. In parallel, if one bulb goes out, only that bulb is done, the, the lights still go. If you use series, if one bulb goes out, the entire strand of lights will not work. And if you want to take the time to check every bulb, go for it. Draw a schematic diagram with four lights and then draw a schematic diagram with two lights that you could turn off either or to have a complete circuit. So I will show you those right here. There's number three, four lights, and there's one with a switch. And notice this is two switches. So this is one of those where you like, you got... Our house, we have multiple areas. Our, my bedroom, my wife and I's bedroom has two switches where we can turn the switch on or off for that. My daughter and my son's bedroom, actually, are all this, all of our bedrooms are, are wired that way. So we have two switches to turn the, the ceiling fan slash lights off. Number five, contrast how a fuse and circuit breaker work to protect overloading circuits. A fuse melts, and we call it more commonly called popping, where a circuit breaker trips. And you have to reset it and reuse it. But a fuse, once it pops, you got to put a new fuse in. Predict whether a fuse will work if the device is is using is connected to parallel. If the device is supposed to protect, a fuse will not work in parallel because if the fuse blows, the circuit will still be able to connect. And for number seven and eight, those were math problems. We'll get you the answers back here real quick. I'll just show them to you quick. Seven and eight, right there they are. Three amps, or yeah, uh, one, 1100 watts, 0.3 amps, and 0.62 amps. So the 75 watt bulb would have more current. And of course, hardly nobody's using 75 watt bulbs anymore since we're almost all going to LEDs. Again, if you have questions, let me know. Get those assignments in. Try to get all the points you can, guys, okay?